During the English Civil Wars, you could have been killed in a number of terrible ways. Stabbed by a sword, shot by a musket, blown up by a granado, crushed to death in the push of pike, or torn apart by a cannonball. In short, the English Civil Wars were anything but civil. Brother fought brother and father against son. Men and women fought for a religion, the authority of the king, the liberties of parliament, and even national identity. But the Second Civil War is even more infamous for its brutality. The conflicts or garrisons put to the sword, local massacres, prisoners of war being executed, as well as summary executions, where men received neither trial nor a chance to defend themselves. One particular brutal killing during this short conflict could be mistaken for some of the atrocities committed on the Eastern Front during the Second World War. The victim of this pitiless assault was one Michael Hudson. Hudson was an Oxford graduate and had become a clergyman before the conflict. At the beginning of the war, he joined the Royalist cause and even fought at the first pitched battle at Edge Hill in 1642. When the king became camped in his war capital at Oxford, Hudson followed and became a royal chaplain. He must have been a very able individual as he was later given the post of scoutmaster to the Marquis of Newcastle. He was also reported to have probably been at the Battle of Marston Moor in 1644. During his time working and fighting for the king, he must have proved his worth and shown himself to be irreplaceable in the eyes of Charles I. When the king decided to leave Oxford in 1646, Hudson was one of the few men ordered to accompany him. When Charles had surrendered to the Scots, Parliament demanded that Hudson be handed over to them, but the Scots refused. Not only did they refuse, but they released him. But Hudson's luck did not last for long, because he was captured trying to escape to France. In June of 1646, he appeared before a parliamentary committee where he described the king's movements after leaving Oxford. This 17th century Houdini did not stay in prison for long, as he escaped and rapidly became an agent for the royalist cause, smuggling letters to and fro from the king. However, in January of 1647, he was again captured, and this time placed in the Tower of London. Unbelievably, a year later, he managed to escape, this time disguised as an apple seller. But Hudson was not a man to stay still for long. As soon as he was free, he raised a troop of royalist horse and garrisoned Woodcroft House in Northamptonshire. This would prove to be a very strong defensive position, with its own moat. But as always, Hudson's luck did not last for long, as the garrison was rapidly besieged by elements of the new model army. Records show that the Royalists under Hudson defended the house resolutely, but eventually the enemy broke through the defences. The Royalist defenders fought all the way to the rooftops, but eventually the Royalist defenders finally surrendered and laid down their arms. This was done apparently after they were offered quarter if they surrendered. For whatever reason, this promise was not kept. Hudson himself was grabbed by the bloodthirsty parliamentarians and hurled over the battlements. This remarkable soldier and agent managed to stop his fall by grabbing onto a water spout. But with nothing but a long fall beneath him, the vengeful soldiers above him, he was doomed. A soldier above him unsheathed his sword and hacked down cutting off Hudson's hands. Hudson fell and landed with a splash in the moat below. With only his blood-covered stumps for arms, he managed to struggle ashore where he was met by another group of soldiers. These were just as merciless as their comrades on the roof, as they promptly beat Hudson to death with the butts of their muskets. His grisly end did not end there though. According to a royalist report attempting to blacken the name of parliamentary forces, the soldiers then cut out Hudson's tongue and carried it around as a battle trophy. The tongue story may not be true, but if only parts of this tale are true, it goes some way to show just how brutal the fighting was during the English Civil Wars.